No one knows, right? We talked about the nubs endlessly. Yeah, people, all sorts of speculation. Like people have geopolymer explanations for them. People have, you know, I, a lot of people try to say they're lifting bosses, and I, that's not how that this they would flip over. They're not in the right place. One thing's for certain, I think, with the nubs that that is an observation a friend of ours, a Chuck, a geologist, made, which is that if you look at how stone is quarried, right? So one of the common methods still used to some extent today, but certainly is attributed to cultures like this and the Egyptians, is the what they call the wedge and feather quarrying, right? You cut these little wedges out, and then you you hammer in either you know wood and wet it, and tries to you're trying to split stone basically. You're trying, and they still do it today. One thing you'll never be left with in a splitting or a wedge and feather approach is a nub. Like you can imagine, you can't imagine these stone faces splitting and leaving these bloody nubs that are on all of these walls. Right. So they're formed. They're, they're formed, either deliberately formed or they're a result of some other process we don't know. But they're, they're not the result of this sort of primitive quarrying method. They, they, I don't know where they are, but they're on everything. And that's another. It's, it's another, weird that they leave them there as well. Right? Well, they're in Egypt too. Like they're on the Menk like if you compare that wall to like the third pyramid, the Menkara pyramid, it's exactly the same. I mean, it looks exactly the same.